Chapter 31. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Avenge the people of Israel of the Midianites. Afterward shalt thou be gathered unto thy people. Meaning after this, you're going to go upon the mount and die. The time had now come for the fulfillment of the command which had already been given to afflict and vex the Midianites to go to war with the Midianites in Numbers 25. After which... Moses was to be gathered unto his people as it had been revealed to him in Numbers 27. So there was an obvious interval between the command and the fulfillment of it, the very same as in Numbers 27 where the Lord tells, he commands Moses, go upon the mount and see the promised land, for you are not going to enter into it yourself. So there are obvious intervals between these commands. The command to vex the Midianites and smite them had been given before, but how long before we cannot tell. Possibly the interval had been purposely allowed in order that the attack, when it was made, might be sudden and unexpected, which sounds more logical to me because they had just had this problem with the Midianites. They had killed this daughter of this prominent man, this Midianite woman. They had just killed her. So, of course, the Midianites would have been on edge a little bit and they would have been more defensible. So a brief period of time to pass to let them become more lax in their um, defense. But real quick, who are these Midianites? Once again, a semi-nomad people descended from Abraham and Keturah, one of his uh, concubines, occupying a tract of country east and southeast of Moab, which lay on the eastern coast of the Dead Sea. So these people were probably scattered, much like Moses' brother-in-law was found right in here, but the, uh, the Midian that we're fir uh, first told about is just across where they had crossed the Red Sea. And that's where Moses was camped out for 40 years before the Lord called him at the burning bush. But now we're finding some of them up here by the Dead Sea. Now it's very important to realize how there are still survivors after this great battle because they're not strictly residing around the Dead Sea as we hear about them later on. But in the book of Joshua, we read about these uh, Midianites connected with the kingdom of Sion. It's the Amorites in whom they've already fought, but they have been lumped in with them. So they're being ruled over by the Amorites. And all the cities, according to Joshua 13, and all the cities of the plain, and all the kingdom of Sion, king of the Amorites, which reigned in Heshbon, whom Moses smote with the princes of Midian, Eva and Rechem and Zer and Hur and Reba, which were dukes of Sion dwelling in the country. And remember, it was these Midianites in whom they played a primary role with the Moabites in getting Israel to start to worship Baal, uh, Baal pure. And that's the cause behind this uh, war that's coming up. And Moses spake unto the people, saying, Arm some of yourselves unto the war. And let them go against the Midianites and avenge the Lord of Midian. Of every tribe a thousand throughout all the tribes of Israel shall ye send to the war. So there were delivered out of the thousands of Israel, a thousand of every tribe, 12,000 armed for war. And Moses sent them to the war, a thousand of every tribe, them and Phinehas, the son of the high priest, Eleazar, the priest, to the war with the holy instruments and the trumpets to blow in his hand. So notice the only names mentioned out of these thousands are Moses and Phinehas, both holy men, neither one participating in the war. And this is showing us, because of the emphasis on these holy men, how this is a holy war. This is a war that God wants annihilate these people. These are evil people. And they warred against the Midianites as the Lord commanded Moses, and they slew all the males. And of course, this was all the males involved in the actual battle. Many of them in whom did not participate in such evils, they weren't present. But now catch verse 8. And they slew the kings of Midian, beside the rest of them that were slain, namely, Eva, Rechem, Zer, and Hur, and Reba, the five kings of Mid uh, Midian. But also read, Balaam. The prophet Balaam, in whom, whom we had spent three chapters going over, he gave the mighty blessings upon these high places 
and Moab. Balaam also, the son of Beor, they slew with the sword. They also killed Balaam. Now, some of you may be wondering, why would they kill such a man of God in whom three chapters are built up in showing the revelations that the Lord gave unto this man, Balaam? Well, later on in this chapter, we're going to be learning in verse 16, Behold, these, the Midianites, caused the children of Israel through the counsel of Balaam to commit trespass against the Lord in the matter of Peor. And there was a plague among the congregation of the Lord. In the New Testament, Revelation, Jesus himself speaks of this very Balaam. And he is a type of poster boy for false prophets in the New Testament. So what in the world went wrong? Jesus says, But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication, mainly unto this Baal pure, this very evil, dirty, nasty, false god. So we're obviously left out of certain details concerning what Balaam did after he left the Mount of Moab that day. And it's believed to have went something like this. This unprincipled man, Balaam, on his dismissal from Balak, the king of Moab, set out for his home in Mesopotamia. But either diverging from his way to tamper with the Midianites, he remained among them without proceeding farther to incite them against Israel and to watch the effects of his wicked counsel. Now you're saying, why the sudden change? Well, we know that Balaam was very covetous of riches. He was very greedy. In the book of Jude, you can read about this how he coveted riches, and they probably continued to bribe him in order to at least give them counsel on what they should do. Okay, Balaam, we're not going to go to war against them, but how at least can we bring them into ruin? So it's believed that he says, send women on into them, tempt them. You know, if you can't destroy a people, mix with them and pollute the whole bunch. Balaam deserved and got the just reward of his deeds, this death in this battle. His conduct had been atrociously sinful, considering the knowledge he possessed and the revelations he had received of the will of God. Verse 9, And the children of Israel took all the women of Midian captives and their little ones, and took the spoil of all their cattle and all their flocks and all their goods, and they burnt all their cities wherein they dwelt and all their goodly castles with fire. So this was actually quite the campaign, my friends, but take careful note how they took all the women of Midian captive, and they took all the spoil and all the prey, both of men and of beast, and they brought the captives and the prey and the spoil unto Moses and Eleazar the priest and unto the congregation of the children of Israel unto the camp of the plains of Moab, which are by Jordan near Jericho. And Moses and Eleazar, the high priest, and all the princes of the congregation went forth to meet them outside the camp. And Moses was wroth with the officers of the host, with the captains over thousands and captains over hundreds, which came from the battle. And Moses said unto them, Have ye saved all the women alive? Behold, these caused the children of Israel through the counsel of Balaam to commit trespass against the Lord in the matter of Peor. And there was a plague among the congregation of the Lord. But take note of how Moses says, why have you saved the women? No order had been given for the slaughter of the women. And in ancient war, they were commonly reserved for slaves. By their antecedent conduct, however, the Midianitish women had forfeited all claims to mild or merciful treatment. And the sacred character, the avowed object of the war, made their slaughter necessary without any special order. This is common sense. The women are the ones in whom vexed you in the first place. Now, therefore, kill every male among the little ones and kill every woman that hath known a man by lying with him. But all the women children that have not known a man by lying with him, keep alive for yourselves. Now, whenever you see, but all the women children, you can't restrict that to like six, seven, eight year olds. You can't do that because in the KJV children up until the age of about 20, the people are known as children up until that time. And this is one of those instances that many atheists will come against. They say, look, even the slaughter of uh, little boys is uh, commanded right here. Well, this is a unique case. 
among the little ones, which they were forbidden to do to other people, mind you. In Deuteronomy 20.14, there's a strictness against doing this, except the Canaanites, to whom this people had equaled themselves by their horrid crimes. The Midianites are lumped in with the Canaanites. The greatest warning for Israel against mingling with the Canaanites is that the Canaanites will cause them to worship other gods. And we know that that was the modus operandi of these Midianites. So this is also probably going to be that first example. So this is going to be the harshest punishment, much like the man in whom gathered sticks on the Sabbath. Verse 19. And do ye abide outside the camp seven days? They've been around dead bodies. Whosoever hath killed any person and whosoever hath touched any slain, purify both yourselves and your captives on the third day and on the seventh day, just as was commanded with the red heifer sacrifice. And purify all your raiment and all that is made of skins and all work of goat's hair and all things made of wood. Do you see the type of purity that God is wanting for this nation? He's saying, I want you to be the cleanest people unpolluted by idolatry i don't want you mixing mingling fornicating getting disease brought in i don't even if you've been around a dead body don't even come in until you have been cleansed god is wanting complete cleanness for this people and eleazar the high priest said unto the man of war which went to the battle this is the ordinance of the law which the Lord commanded Moses. Only the gold and the silver, the brass, the iron, the tan, and the lead, everything that may abide the fire, ye shall make it go through the fire. And it shall be clean. Nevertheless, it shall be purified with the water of separation. And all that abideth not the fire, ye shall make go through the water. And ye shall wash your clothes on the seventh day, and ye shall be clean, and afterward ye shall come into the camp. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the sum of the prey that was taken, both of man and of beast, thou and Eleazar the priest, and the chief fathers of the congregation, and divide the prey into two parts, between them that took the war upon them who went out to battle, and between all the congregation, and levy a tribute unto the Lord of the men of war which went out to battle, one soul of five hundred, both of the persons, and of the beeves, and of the asses, and of the sheep. Take it of their half, and give it unto Eleazar the priest for a heave offering of the Lord. And of the children of Israel's half, thou shalt take one portion of fifty of the persons, of the beeves, of the asses, and of the flocks, of all manner of beasts, and give them unto the Levites, which keep the charge of the tabernacle of the Lord. And Moses and Eleazar the priest did as the Lord commanded Moses. Now for the rest of the chapter, I'm just going to allow the text and the audio to play. It's just telling about the plunder that was gained. But here's a quick summary of it. 675,000 sheep, 72,000 beeves or oxen, 61,000 asses, and 32,000 females who had never known a man. So half of this went to the soldiers, the other half went to the children of Israel. And out of that was 2%, or 1 in 50, both of women and cattle, were given to the Levites. And we're also told about 16,750 shekels, which was perhaps put for the priest or national use. And the booty, being the rest of the prey which the men of war had caught, was six hundred thousand and seventy thousand and five thousand sheep, and threescore and twelve thousand beeves, and threescore and one thousand asses, and thirty and two thousand persons in all, of women that had not known man by lying with him. And the half, which was the portion of them that went out to war, was in number three hundred thousand and seven and thirty thousand and five hundred sheep. And the Lord's tribute of the sheep was six hundred and threescore and fifteen, and the beeves were thirty and six thousand, of which the Lord's tribute was threescore and twelve, and the asses were thirty thousand and five hundred, of which the Lord's tribute was threescore and one, and the persons were sixteen thousand, of which the Lord's tribute was thirty and two persons. And Moses gave the tribute, which was the Lord's heave offering unto Eleazar the priest, as the Lord commanded Moses. And of the children of Israel's half, which Moses divided from the men that warred, now the half that pertained unto the congregation was three hundred thousand, and thirty thousand, and seven thousand, and five hundred sheep, and thirty and six thousand beeves, and thirty thousand asses, and five hundred, 
and 16,000 persons, even of the children of Israel's half, Moses took one portion of 50, both of man and of beast, and gave them unto the Levites, which kept the charge of the tabernacle of the Lord, as the Lord commanded Moses. And the officers which were over thousands of the host, the captains of thousands and captains of hundreds, came near unto Moses. And they said unto Moses, Thy servants have taken the sum of the men of war which are under our charge, and there lacketh not one man of us. We have therefore brought an oblation for the Lord, what every man hath gotten, of jewels of gold, chains and bracelets, rings, earrings and tablets, to make an atonement for our souls before the Lord. And Moses and Eleazar the priest took the gold of them, even all wrought jewels. And all the gold of the offering that they offered up to the Lord, of the captains of thousands and of the captains of hundreds, were sixteen thousand seven hundred and fifty shekels. For the men of war had taken spoil, every man for himself. And Moses and Eleazar the priest took the gold of the captains of thousands and of hundreds, and brought it into the tabernacle of the congregation, for a memorial for the children of Israel before the Lord.